let's talk about The Warrior's Apprentice and The War Game by Lois McMaster Bujold in this bind up Young Miles. Uh, now this is a good alternative starting point or entry point to the Vorkosigan saga. Uh, it's good because it introduces the main generation of characters and really the main character of the saga, Miles Vorkosigan. Uh, the other good starting point I've already reviewed which is Shards of Honour slash Barry are uh, in the bind up if you can get the bind up Cordelia's Honour. Now this one, The Warrior's Apprentice, is the first novel. That was, I think, Bujold's key novel that got her signed. She got signed for the three novel deal, Shards of Honour, already written, often rejected, and then Warrior's Apprentice, and then a standalone within the same universe, Ethan of Athos, uh, which is in the next bind up. And so really, Warrior's Apprentice, I think, is what got her really started. The Vore game came later and was, I think, a Hugo Award winner, as was Barry R, which I've already reviewed. So, Miles Vorkosigan is the main character. He is partially disabled. He's the son of an aristocrat on a world which really cares about strength and fitness and physical prowess at the world Barriar. His father is the Prime Minister of Barriar and himself fairly traditional, um, and his grandfather is even more traditional. While his mother is from what we would consider a more liberal world, a beta colony. And so there's a kind of mixed background to Miles as a character and, and with lots of different demands and influences on him. And Warrior's Apprentice starts with, this is basically the setup, this is the first kind of couple of pages. It starts with Miles flunking out of military school due to his physical limitations. He's phenotypically limited due to an attack on his parents when he was in his mother's womb. Um, and so he's deformed, partially deformed by that. So he's very short, he's quite weak, his bones are fragile, things like that. And uh, he flunks out due to his physical limitations. And then he goes off to his mother's home world to see his grandmother. And from there, it spins into an increasingly uh, bizarre, ridiculous set of circumstances where he ends up... Um, well, this story, Warrior's Apprentice, really tells the story of how he ends up with a mercenary fleet of his very own uh, at the age of, you know, 18, 19, I think 20, 20. Um, and the big appeal in The Warrior's Apprentice is Miles's uh, only forward attitude, you know, just constantly barreling through from chaos to chaos, using his charisma and his cunning to move from one improbable event to the next and survive it and try to bring some, uh, some good out of it, you know, increasingly risky plays to get ahead, to get to the next objective. And... Warrior's Apprentice also benefits. That's really fun, and it benefits from a strong supporting cast. Miles is, in my view, great. Not everyone loves him. I think he's great. Uh, but he also has Sergeant Bathari, his bodyguard, and Elena, Sergeant Bathari's daughter, with him, amongst some other supporting characters. And they're very strong characters. You do see some of the uh, characters from those first couple of books as well. Count Ar uh, Volkosigan, um, Count Peter Volkosigan, and... Cordelia Naismith, his mother, and they're welcome entries and they're very good characters. There's some really good stuff that's worth reading if you've read Shards of Honour as well. So if you do read that, you'll enjoy some things here. And if you read this first and go back to Shards of Honour and Barry R, you'll enjoy some stuff there uh, in a different light as you read them. Now, this is the first book in this bind up. Morris Apprentice is a well executed uh, space opera with the hints of military sci fi, but really chiefly a space opera uh, of sort of adventure and daring do but in a with a twist and it's somewhat implausible it's kind of meant to be it's meant to be ridiculous almost how miles is getting into these situations that might grate on you it didn't grate on me but that is a warning uh, but for me miles's bravura uh, pulled it through it meant they got away with it just like miles kept getting away with uh, his nonsense bourgeois gets away with her very open-handed nonsense by kind of giving you miles to enjoy it through. Uh, this bind up also has a short novella, which I'll quickly sum up, Mountains of Morning, where Miles is sent by his father to investigate a backwards area uh, in their home province where they rule. And um, there's been an infanticide, basically. A uh, baby has been killed, it seems, for having just a hair lip. And it's not clear who did it, though there is a suspect. And Miles goes to exact the Count's justice uh, to, to be his father's representative. And so there's a few things going on there. It's a coming of age story in a way. He's got to take responsibility in a very serious situation. It also is a chance to reflect on his own 
uh, deformities and the way it fits in with his society where these attitudes are changing but in this remote area uh, some older attitudes where strength is required to live um, and that dominates a lot of thinking about having children uh, that is still a, a problem uh, or rather it's still a hangover attitude of a different era and there's a sensitive exploration of cultural change and of Miles's place within that culture so mountains of mourning is good then there's the vor game and the vor game basically there are two plots there's a sort of prologue section and then the main section first miles goes to be the weatherman for an arctic military base um, and finds out things that are going on there and and, and uh, sticks his nose in as you come to expect from miles and then he goes on an intelligence mission which goes wrong um, into a galactic hub, to a wormhole hub. This is a world connected by wormholes. Um, uh, it's like a, a universe connected by wormholes. And it's a very important place, the Hagen hub. And Barry R has interests there, but there are also other forces acting strangely there. And, uh, and Miles, as things go wrong, he tries to both stay alive, as you'd imagine, but he also tries to gain something for Barry R, to get Barry R into a better situation, to preserve its interests. And this is more military sci-fi with an intrigue emphasis than, say, space opera. And I think that's a massive flexibility in Bujol that um, it, within the Vorkosigan saga, you have Shards of Honour and, uh, and Barry R, which are sort of almost heavily romantic, but with heavy intrigue elements. And then you go to Warrior's Apprentice, space opera, uh, mountains of Mourning, sci-fi procedural investigation um, and cultural reflection. And then the war game, which is military sci-fi with an intrigue emphasis. Uh, Bujol is very big on intrigue, very good on intrigue, both political and uh, and spy. And she does that very well here. Uh, it's also something, it plays uh, similar riffs to Warrior's Apprentice. So it is significantly about Miles' ability to get his way through situations. That is a recurring theme of the Miles novels. Uh, but there's more military and intrigue um, and there's also themes of duty, loyalty and uh, it's got a much weightier tone than The Warrior's Apprentice. It's not just Miles blagging it through stuff in an entertaining fashion with serious elements but rather it's a reflection on how Miles can actually serve his, his planet and his people. And the central attraction to all of this is, is Miles. And not just his ability to be charismatic and entertaining, but also the way in which he bridges the worlds his parents are from. Um, so his mother, very cynical about Barry R. You know, she's from a much better place, she thinks. Her father, uh, his father, sorry, um, she he is somewhat traditionalist, but, you know, looking forward, wanting to shift things forward. Uh, but ma a man who's very hierarchical, very... Milita military minded in a way that Miles for various reasons uh, is not. Miles is clear eyed about where he comes from but he loves Barry R and he loves some of the things that it has been and still can be. He doesn't simply dismiss that um, and I think that balance between those character traits um, you know a character who is attempting to hold on to what is good about where he's from as well as in what in his view are good changes or good things to pursue for the future i think that's a really interesting combination so seeing miles both black his way through things but also dealing with uh, the idea of what barry r's interests are and what's the barry r own way to do things and some other um, elements of the plot that develop as you read the book i think it's a very strong book and um, you can see why it won the hugo uh, it's something where people can be sniffy about that era of cj cherry and uh, and lois mcmaster bujold winning and being nominated for the hugo but it's really they're very good novels uh, and I recommend them. As I say, they're good introductions to the Volkosigan saga. Uh, you could, as I say, so start with either Shards of Honour and Barry R or uh, Warrior's Apprentice and the Vore game. Uh, and if you can get it in Young Miles, you can also get the short story or novella Mountains of Morning. With that said, if you've read these, what do you think? Uh, have you read other Volkosigan saga books? Uh, have you read anything by McMaster Bujold? Not many people have, it feels like. Tell me what you thought in the comments and tell me maybe other good um, space opera and military sci-fi uh, that you've enjoyed reading recently. Till next time.